With the launch of Chapter 3, Fortnite upgraded its game engine and brought with a fresh map with brand new locations to explore, updated weapons and items to use, as well as improved and well-polished graphics. With that in mind, I created this video to find out if Nvidia's GTX 1050 Ti chipset is still good on running Fortnite and what settings we have to apply in order to achieve max frames per second while keeping the graphics fidelity at acceptable levels. Since its launch day back in 2015, Fortnite always based on Unreal Game Engine. Season 3 prompted the transition from Unreal Engine version 4 to version 5 a more eye candy and at the same time more demanding graphics engine. Objects like trees and grass have been enhanced visually, the reflections on water have become more realistic and the lighting is much better now. This change a side effect could potentially reduce the number of active players who didn't have access to powerful enough computer hardware to run the game efficiently if Epic Games didn't upgrade the performance mode into the beta phase on time. A new rendering setting called performance mode allowed for higher frame rates and smoother frame times by sacrificing visual quality. On the other hand, the game still offers DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 to players who don't want to compromise graphics for performance. My goal today is to test the MSI GTX 1050 Ti Gaming X in all rendering modes under different video settings until I conclude which one exhibits the best performance while maintaining acceptable visual quality. Even more, I will also reveal some tips on how you can further boost the overall FPS. If you are interested in knowing why it is so important to play all the competitive eSport first-person shooters at the highest possible frames per second that your graphics card can provide, then check out the description of the cited link which explains very thoroughly the correlation between low delay, high explosiveness and high frame rate. To follow through easier the entire video, the content will be separated into three parts. The first part will present the specifications of the hardware I will use to run the benchmarks. Then it will continue with NVIDIA software and driver optimization along with a quick and simple Windows 10 tuning to make your computer faster while gaming. And it will close with a thorough analysis on Fortnite's video settings. The second part will be the main course of this video and includes all the benchmarks and their results while I'm playing around with different rendering modes, view distance settings and implementing micro adjustments here and there trying to find out the best outcome. The third and last part will summarize all the final conclusions, revealing the best possible video settings for your GTX 1050 Ti card and offering some further tips and tricks to increase even more the overall performance. There is an awful amount of information and lots of numbers for you to absorb, which took me a great deal of time and plenty of research to gather up and present to you as best as I could. So I really hope you enjoy every minute of it. If on the other hand you don't want to watch the entire content in order to obtain the required data, that will let your GTX 1050 Ti graphics card to reach the maximum frames per second, check the timestamps on the video timeline or the description below and jump in to the summarizing results without any further delays. For the rest of my amazing viewers that are going to stick with me until the end of the story, let me introduce you to my benchmark PC. Beginning with the motherboard, an MSI B450M mortar accompanied by AMD's Ryzen 7 1700 processor, overclocked at 3.7 GHz to mitigate as much as possible any CPU bottleneck. The 32GB of 3200MHz DDR4 memory will be plenty for the task, and the 650W power supply unit can provide more than enough power for our components. For storage, I use 1TB Western Digital Blue NVMe M.2 drive that hosts a fresh installed copy of Windows 10 version 21H2, and all the necessary software to complete the tests. 27 inch 1080 max resolution and 60 Hz refresh rate will be the main display monitor, which provides a typical resolution that almost 70% of gamers are using according to Steam's hardware survey of January 2022. To ensure that no other procedure will interfere with the testing results, I use a second computer to record and an Elgato external USB device to capture the gameplay footage. The final video output is the result of 1080, 30 frames per second, MP4 file. The graphics card is running with the latest NVIDIA's driver. To check out if you have the most updated NVIDIA drivers, open the NVIDIA control panel and then compare it with NVIDIA's latest drivers update. Keep in mind that generally maintaining your graphics card with the newest version drivers results in better performance, so before you apply any of the suggested settings that I'm going to present in this video, please install first the latest drivers. As mentioned above, the selected resolution will be 1080p 60Hz refresh rate. In your case, set the preferred refresh rate to highest available. The bulk of crucial settings are gathered inside the 3D settings menu. 
From here you will go to the power management mode and set it to maximum performance. On the texture filtering quality you will select performance. Set the threaded optimization to on if you have a multi-threaded CPU. On vertical sync select fast and at virtual reality pre-rendering frames select the integer one. Do not forget to press apply before you proceed to Windows 10 gaming optimization. Now press the window logo key and then select the settings icon. From the popped window select the gaming category and from there go to game mode and be sure that the corresponding selection is on. Now go on the search box and write power plan. Open the corresponding setting. On the new window, click on Change Advanced Power Settings. Open the Processor Power Management and change the minimum processor state to 100%. Press OK and jump in into Fortnite's Game Options. My priority here is to push the MSI GTX 1050 Ti Gaming X to reach high frames per second and low latency with as clear graphics as possible. The visual optimization is irrelevant for competitive, fast-paced eSport games similar to Fortnite, so most settings that trade performance for aesthetics will be turned off or set to low. Most of Fortnite players like to call this type of setup as Pro settings. For both mine and your convenience, the Fortnite video settings will be separated into those whose variable will remain constant and those who will change. The former settings will be full screen window mode at 1080 resolution and frame rate at unlimited. Everything inside the graphics submenu will remain unchangeable. The 3D resolution will stay 100%. The shadows and the aliasing settings will turn off. And the textures, effects and post-processing settings will be switched to low. The V-Sync and motion blur will be turned off also. Allowing multi-threaded rendering is a must if you play on processor with more than one CPU cores. All the layout elements like show FPS latency markers and CPU crash debugging are unneeded, thus will be turned off. Last but not least, there is the NVIDIA's Reflex low latency settings which keeps the GPU in sync with the CPU, resulting in reduced system latency. This comes with a small drawback that reduces a bit the frames per second, that's why I will leave it off. At this point, there are few video settings that I haven't referred to, in particular the near, medium, far and epic view distance, as well as the editing APIs DirectX 11, DirectX 12 and performance mode. These are the main settings that I'm going to experiment with in order to find balance between high performance and graphical fidelity. The performance differences between these settings can be measured using two software tools, the MSI Afterburner combined with Riva Tuner Server. Most of the benchmarking footage will include a layout with numbers at the upper left corner of the screen. With the help of those, I can harvest information about the performance of the graphics card while I'm playing Fortnite. For your comfort, every time I'm going to refer on a specific element of MSI's layout, I will also highlight it, so it will be easier for you to follow through the benchmarking narration. Now that we're done with the benchmarking methodology, it is time to proceed with the meat and potatoes of this video, the benchmarking tests. I will initialize my examination choosing DirectX 11 and tampering with the view distance settings. Higher distance levels increase the overall workload of both CPU and GPU, resulting in a lower frame rate as more models and objects appear in the background. The goal is to find out which setting offers better performance without compromising much the ability to track down an enemy from afar. Comparing the medium, far and epic view distance settings, we observe almost zero visual differences. Both the quantity of the textures and the object mass are similar as far as the eye can see. However, in terms of performance, there is a minor drop of 2% when we choose higher distance settings. That might not seem like a big deal, but when minor drops or gains are added up together, they make at the end a big difference. 
Furthermore, according to anecdotal references, Fortnite players are not able to hit enemies from distances above 300 meters, making medium the ideal setting as it allows you to always see distant enemies and loot alike without adding in unnecessary lag by pre editing relevant textures like buildings and trees that are very far away or enemies that your bullets can't reach yet. There are, however, some huge differences when we compare near with medium view distance. Objects like trees and houses disappearing from horizon. We also lose the advantage to track down enemies or loot from afar. In this case, it definitely doesn't worth the two frames gain. Same results we notice selecting DirectX 12 as a rendering mode. Medium setting was superior compared to near and almost similar to far and epic. There was a minor increased difference in performance, this time of 4 frames between epic far and medium and 7 frames between medium and near. Repeating the same tests on performance mode, I stumbled upon a weird problem. The trees were rendering incorrectly, looking weird and distorted, very, very distorted. While I've been beating the bushes for a solution, I found out that this is a very common Fortnite bug. If you experience the same problem, check out this video that I give a quick and easy fix on how you can get rid once and for all the tree rendering glitch. After this short detour, I could proceed again with the tests. Likewise, the previous APIs, performance mode on medium distance gave better visual results than near settings and similar to far and epic, but there was an unexpected twist in terms of performance. If you observe very carefully the MSI layout up to the left corner, you can see that all four settings produce more or less the same frame rate values. This makes the far or epic settings more appealing than the medium. For the sake of my benchmarking tests, I will keep medium view distance as the preferred one for the rest of my video. Otherwise, consider the epic view distance as the best choice for performance mode and the medium view distance for DirectX 11 and DirectX 12. The next test is based upon a built-in Fortnite benchmark tool made by the user DWIRUS that every party can have access to through creative mode. It is a very demanding test, integrating a combination of high number of objects, rendering textures with multiplex sliding effects and shadows, creating one of the worst case gameplay scenarios. The main goal of this test is simple. We examine which rendering mode can produce the highest frames per second. Making use of DirectX 11 on Pro settings and medium view distance, the MSI GTX 1050 Ti Gaming X hits its limits. Oftentimes, it is reaching 96% workloads and gives an average 106 frames per second, providing that this 6 years old low tier hardware can offer some decent performance, even under stressful gameplay situations. The 1% low scored 50 frames per second and fell off the preferred 60 frames minimum. So I had to move into DirectX 11 with the hope to get better results than his predecessor, which I got, but I didn't expect to see that much of improvement. This time, the graphics card produced 124 average and 57 of 1% low frames per second, an impressive 13% improvement by just choosing a different API. This made me very curious to see how much of improvement the promising performance mode could offer, comparing to the excellent results of DirectX 12. And indeed, the newer rendering mode delivered exactly what it promised to, with 129 average and 101 of 1% low frames per second, that is 37% and 25% more frames compared to DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 respectively. The index of 1% low has a headroom of 41 frames above the minimum 60, making very clear that performance mode was the winner of this test. Additionally, it is worth mentioning that this integrated benchmark is a great tool. Check the horsepower of the GTX 1050 Ti. However, with so much happening on screen, it is impossible to consider it as a proper tool for measuring graphics fidelity. For this reason, I chose for my next benchmark tool the Party Royale game mode and more specific the main stage. An excellent place that implements nice graphics mixed with some very demanding visual effects. Just the right combination to measure not only the speed but also the optimal efficiency of the MSI GTX 1050 Ti. Once more, I began with DirectX 11 and of course the video settings I used all along the previous tests. 
the main stage offers a circular field with jumping ramps and various obstacles to overtake. The end result of 4 minutes run gave 125 average and 59 of 1% low frames per second. The frame time graph wasn't totally flat, containing some small and constant fluctuations. DirectX 12 gave better results with 130 and 95 average and 1% low respectively. A huge 38 increased performance at 1% low, explaining the lower frame time numbers and the almost flat frame time graph. The remaining content stand, the performance mode, gave as expected even higher results than DirectX 11, hitting 158 average and 105 of 1% low frames per second, with low frame times, but the graph did reveal some sporadically highs and lows. Nothing awesome for the actual run, that it was smooth like butter and overall 15% better than DirectX 12. Both the built-in benchmark and the party royal runs revealed that the obvious weaker rendering mode is the DirectX 11, giving worse results both on average and 1% low frames per second, as well as on frame time graph. Clearly, performance mode gave the highest average, 1% low and overall frames per second, and it had slightly worse frame timeline graph than DirectX 12. On the other hand, it was visually obvious the huge difference between the higher graphical fidelity of DirectX 12 compared to performance mode. In fact, I would highly recommend using the former if you want satisfying frame rate numbers with great picture quality. Otherwise, performance mode is the best option for those who just care about high frames and are satisfied with average graphics. At this point, some of you might think that my benchmark examination reached to its end, but I wasn't quite done yet. Now that I had separated the wheat from the chaff and found the optimal video settings, it was time the performance mode, champion of the high frames per second, to compete DirectX 12, champion of the optimal ratio between performance and graphics quality. This time, both rating modes had to pass the challenge of the baddest Fortnite gaming modes of all, aka the Rumble mode. Beginning with the quality King DirectX 12 was able to give 123 average FPS and 60 frames per second of 1% low with smooth frame time graph without stutters. Obtaining these big results all the while the screen was displaying a constant high number of characters fighting each other non-stop is not an easy feat. Even though the GTX 1050 Ti reached nearly 100% utilization, the video memory never exceeded the 2GB, while the system memory is almost 11GB, proving that even graphics cards with 2 or 3GB VRAM can still run Fortnite at Pro settings. Under the same tough conditions, the performance mode pulled out also some very impressive numbers. The average frames weren't a surprise, ranging between 200 to 210 frames per second. The surprise here was the 1% low, fluctuating between 70 to 75 frames per second, giving almost similar numbers with DirectX 12. Can't quite explain why this happened, definitely it wasn't a matter of CPU bottlenecking that was barely reaching 50% utilization. The frame time was a bit smoother and lower than DirectX 12, the GPU was working less hard with slightly lower VRAM and system memory and lower CPU and GPU temperatures. In theory, it should give higher 1% low FPS than DirectX 12, but it didn't. I even considered to drop the resolution to 720 using NVIDIA's NIS at 30% sharpening with the hope to get some improvement. Despite that and the unavoidable shoddy graphics, the GPU attained worse average frames per second dropping to 165 and a bit better 1% low with 85 frames per second, making the choice of 720 NIS at performance mode unworthy. On the other hand, you should consider the use of 720 NIS on DirectX 12 as a great choice, capable to produce 145 average and 1% low at 75 frames per second, a 10 to 15% better performance than the native 1080 DirectX 12 and 12% lower performance compared to 720 NIS performance mode. Still, checking both modes side by side, the DirectX 12 produced way superior graphics quality with better image clarity and finer texture shaping. 
Summarizing all the test results together, I can safely provide to all of you GTX 1050 Ti owners the best settings for DirectX 12 as well as performance mode while leaving out the inferior DirectX 11. Both DirectX 12 and performance mode will use more or less the same settings. With 1080 resolution at full screen mode being a standard requirement for any genuine low budget gamer. I can't think a good reason on why a GTX 1050 Ti owner will try a higher resolution. The frame rate will set to unlimited, otherwise we cancel the whole purpose of this video. The graphics sub-menu will remain unchangeable. You should keep in mind that these settings cannot affect the frame rate, therefore your settings here depend on the monitor you use and your own individual preferences. The 3D resolution should be 100% to keep the picture quality at decent levels. The shadows and the anti-aliasing settings should be turned off and the texture, the effects and the post-processing settings at low. All these five settings are responsible to tune the graphics fidelity by trading performance. Even with these settings off and low, the image quality is good enough for all the pro and competitive players. Vsync and motion blur will be off. Multi-thread rendering should be on to take advantage of your CPU's extra cores. Show FPS, latency markers, latency flash, GPU and crash debugging set to off. Last but not least, we have to talk about the elephant in the room, the NVIDIA Reflex low latency setting. There are three big reasons that NVIDIA Reflex technology is very important for all Fortnite players. First, what NVIDIA Reflex does is forcibly keeping the GPU buffer clear so that no matter your frame rate is, your GPU always renders the most recent frames. Thus, if you enable it, you don't have to worry about capping the produced frames per second to match your monitor's refresh rate. Second reason is that using NVIDIA's Reflex low latency, you can accumulate the highest possible frames while playing on 60Hz refresh rate monitor without witnessing constant image tearing. As for the third reason, it has to do with the input delay. This refers to the overall time gap that takes place between pressing an action button and the corresponding action being displayed on your screen. When NVIDIA Reflex is enabled, it offers lower input latency because it lets you to uncap the frame rate and uncapping your frame rate always causes lower input delay regardless of your monitor refresh rate. And why you care about low input delay? Because it makes your gameplay response and reactions faster while building and claiming walls or while you are in the middle of intense fight. Under my testing benchmarks, I always kept the NVIDIA's Reflex low latency setting off. This way, I was able to get the highest frames possible. If you feel like that your gameplay will benefit more by decreasing the input delay, then select On plus Boost. Unfortunately, this choice comes with a small caveat of 3% lower performance. Nothing biggie if you already reach on average more than 140 frames per second, it is up to you which one serves you best. Whatever you do, just don't choose the setting On. It results lower performance than the other two settings. Before I jump into my final conclusions, I'm going to leave some tips on how you can squeeze a bit more frames on both DirectX 12 and performance mode but with some small image quality loss. First, you can drop the resolution to 80% and then set the view distance mode to near. Someone might think this will be too much, especially if you try it on performance mode 720NIS and 30% sharpening, but as you can see, in a side-by-side -side comparison with 1080 neutral, the difference quality is barely visible, while the performance rises by 60 more frames per second. A 25% increase? Not shabby, I would say for the GTX 1050 Ti, not shabby at all. If you are considering to overclock the graphics card, Please don't. The GTX 1050 Ti is at least 5 years old chipset with no warranty anymore and thermal stress might break something on card's circuit board. Instead, follow the trusty NVIDIA's image scaling path is much safer and offers higher FPS gains. Overall, I am very pleased with the total performance of MSI's GTX 1050 Ti Gaming X. Sky high frames both on DirectX 12 and performance mode, very decent video quality, low temperatures and noiseless fans. 
the 4 GB VRAM was more than plenty to run smoothly the game and I would definitely recommend to every dedicated Fortnite player with low budget to buy this card at always a reasonable price. Fortnite's upgraded Unreal 5 engine is also amazing. Beyond some weird bugs, it does an amazing job to keep in the game some quite old GPUs. At Pro settings, the video memory never reaches near the 2GB consumption, an indication that every owner with 2GB VRAM graphics card can easily enjoy the game. If you want to know more about the MSI GTX 1050 Ti Gaming X and how many frames per second can pull out on some very demanding gaming titles, check out my video with the title How Good Is GTX 1050 Ti for Gaming in 2022. You can find the corresponding link in the description or you can access now by clicking on the corresponding end screen link. Until we meet again, take care, farewell, goodbye, see you in a while.